In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, it's so wonderful to be with you this evening as we celebrate graduation with our beautiful DeSales community, with all of those who are supporters of our school and with our wonderful graduates, faculty, friends. It's so wonderful to welcome you all tonight. We also have with us today some special guests. We have my friend, Father Daniel Oboyfin, the pastor at All Saints. And we have our friend, Father Joe Vatter, who just retired back to the Lockport region after having been the canonical administrator of DeSales and also pastor at All Saints, and our deacon of the Mass, Howard Morgan, who is at Ransomville at Immaculate Conception. So we have representatives from our whole area around here to celebrate this watershed evening with all of you. And we are joyful to do so. As we celebrate this Holy Mass, we come together in prayer, we come together in recognition of God's love and mercy and the many ways he has blessed us and blessed all of you as you gather here for this wonderful occasion. And so as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred liturgy, we take a moment to call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, oh, wait a second, here we go. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, sorry, a reading from the Gospel, <laughs> a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands, listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother whom he gave me my name. He made me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arms. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain, yet for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, whom formed me as a servant with the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him, and I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to rise up to the tribes of Jacob and restore the saviors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. me, you know me, you know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you Truly you 
have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. My soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you. When I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. A reading from the first. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as king. Of him, God testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he, behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this world of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy towards her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, no, he will be called John. But they answered her, there is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking the father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And they were all amazed. Immediately his mouth was open, his tongue freed, and he spoke blessings of God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? 
for surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as a proud uh, parent of three DeSales alums, I'm, I'm happy to be here tonight and share in this moment um, and be able to share a message from the readings that we heard um, and maybe something will uh, touch your hearts, touch your minds as we go through today. Today's gospel was a wonderful one, right? The birth of John the Baptist, whose feast we celebrate today, the patron of this parish. If we think back to the Annunciation and the story of the angel Gabriel visiting Mary and proclaiming that she will bear the child Jesus, and she also told her about her cousin Elizabeth, who was thought to be barren in her old age but was expecting, and Mary was quite astounded by that. And she asked the angel, how can this be? And Gabriel's response was pretty simple. All things are possible with God. I sat there where your parents sat three times and wondered what was possible. What was possible with a DeSales graduation, a DeSales education for my children? I think sometime tonight you'll receive uh, the letters that your parents wrote um, and you'll open them later. And hopefully, like we experience with our children, they'll reveal the love that your parents have for you, the aspirations that they have for you. When you see what's inside and how they believe in you, you will be pleased. Treasure those letters, treasure them. DeSales gave my children, and probably you as well, confidence. It deepened your faith and gave you newfound abilities. It taught them love, friendships, compassion, faith, stewardship, service to others, and many, many more values. They survived some tough classes. I even received an F from Sister Jeanette one time because I helped my son too much on his project. So she sent a big letter home with an F on it for me. So <laughs> great memories. But in most of their classes, they excelled even more and more, partially because of the great faculty and the great teachers dedicated to the sales. They earned, just like you, and worked for a great education. As we turn back to our readings today, our first reading from Isaiah was pretty telling. It was a message from God calling all of us from birth to a journey, to a journey with him, a journey that sometimes isn't all that easy. It has ups and downs and rough roads, but all things are possible with God. In the Acts of the Apostles, we heard that God promised David in the old, what he promised him in the Old Testament about Jesus coming and about John heralding the way comes true. John and Jesus would bring salvation through the new covenant. And again, nothing is impossible with God. And in our gospel from Luke is rich, as I mentioned. And if we go back to the full story, we see even a bigger picture. You know, Elizabeth, they say she might have been 80 years old, possibly, when she gave birth. In her old age, she still trusted in God, still believed in God, and, and, and it was able to give birth to John. And the important message that Mary received from Gabriel, for nothing will be impossible with God. And then Elizabeth and Zachar Zachariah, right, having to make a decision on their son's name, he being a mute for nine months, until he was able to proclaim that name and name his son John. And John means, in Hebrew, gracious God. What a way to thank God. Tonight as you graduate, it will be like a new birth for you. So many new things will happen in September when you start high school. And as you continue to grow, you'll be born into new stages in your life. There will be times of fun and joy, there will be times of challenges and failures. 
Stick with it. Remember, with God, nothing is impossible. I would venture to guess right now that many of you don't know what you might want to do in life eventually, and that's perfectly okay. Enjoy your youth, enjoy high school and college. But as you look out into life before you, imagine it being a dark summer night and a million fireflies out there, right? And trying to make a decision in life, right? Which one of those fireflies are you gonna catch, right? You run to the one and, it, and the blinker goes off and you run to another one and it's off. You're always trying to catch one of those in a jar. And there's a lot of choices like that that you're gonna make in life. You're gonna go one way and another way, but God will be there to help you, right? And with all, you, with all you've been given, with your gifts, with your talents, your education from DeSales, where you go to high school, where you go to college, will help you eventually capture that correct firefly one day, and then you will have the answers to your questions, but only in, if you trust in God where there is nothing that's impossible. I know, because we all do, your parents have great expectations for you in life. All of you will succeed one way or another. Remember that, one way or another. Be happy with your lot in life, with your vocation eventually. You know what, as I was writing this, I said, you know what, maybe one day, one of you will be walking around in camel's hair, eating honey and locusts, right? And that wouldn't be all that bad. It'd be kind of happy if somebody was taking care of you, right? That was John the Baptist, right? He was the herald of Jesus. What a great vocation to have. But whatever you do, be happy in the decisions that you make. Trust in God. Let him lead you. I would encourage you to be heralds of God, right? Just like John the Baptist was. And you know what? You don't have to shout it from the mountaintops. You don't have to be a priest. You don't need to be a deacon. You don't need to be a, a religious or a sister. Your actions alone should speak volumes that you are a Christian. The values and the morals that you have learned as the basis of your St. Francis de Sales education will speak for themselves. I see these actions in my sons and daughters today, right? Even to this day, some of those values that they learned at the sales are still instilled in them by what they do and how they do it, whether it's in life or whether it's at work, but they're still living those values that they learn. They're still close with their to sales classmates, some of them 20 years into it already, right? And I can even see some of it in your smiles and your eyes tonight. There's something special about that small school set on a hill just outside of Lockport and you are so very fortunate to have that edu Catholic education there. Thanks to your parents and others in that place, it's almost magical. Let me leave you with three quick points tonight. One, don't be afraid or angered when things don't go your way or as you expect. Lean on your faith and trust in God. Secondly, at all times, Listen to where God will call you. With your faith and his guidance, he will not lead you astray. And finally, always remember Gabriel's promise to Mary, for nothing is impossible with God. Keep him a part of your life in some way, shape, or form as you go forward. Congratulations, and God be with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please stand as we now offer to God our prayers to that God for whom nothing shall be impossible. We pray for our hope, our Pope Francis and our Bishop Michael that they are able to continue to guide us in our understanding of our faith and the importance of living the gospel message. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the political leaders of the world, 
that they work toward promoting healthy and life-giving choices while protecting us from those from that would promote us unhealthy choices for financial gain. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those that have dedicated themselves to God's calling, that the priests, teachers, and staff of our DeSales community are able to continue to bring them the message of God's love to each individual and the importance of each individual of the eyes of God. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the DeSales Catholic School Class of 2022, that they will always realize the wonderful gifts they have been giving to them, and that they will continue to grow into the next generation of God's disciples. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those members of our DeSales Class of 1972, that they, can, that they continue to be blessed and be able to be the example of faith, dedication, and support for this generation of followers. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those members of the class of 1972 that have passed on to be with our Heavenly Father, that their friends and family feel peace in knowing that the spirit of St. Francis de Sales lives on in our memories of them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us take a moment of silence in order to offer to God our own private petition and prayers of thanksgiving. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for hearing the prayers we offer to you this evening. We ask you to grant them in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are honored and blessed to have seven graduating cantors for Christ. And I would like to invite them forward to come sing this next song with us. We have been blessed with parents and grandparents and fathers and mothers who raised us and blessed us. So come on forward. We're going to sing this next offering song. This is called God Gives Us Those Who Love Us. And they have been faithful and serving each and every Mass for our school. And I'm going to miss them tremendously as they go. God gives us those who love us.
Please stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. In his presence, St. John the Baptist, we praise in his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing and even in the womb, he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption, and to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save, save us, save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all your clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. So that we have the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, his spouse, St. John the Baptist, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have preached you throughout the ages. We may beg you to be more earnest for eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. How many of us are there? We can put some in here too. kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. sing our communion hymn, Jesus Messiah. The lyrics are found in your program. So we partake of Holy Communion.
Our soon-to-be graduates have chosen a prayer song for our meditation, our communion meditation. We're going to feature our eighth graders singing a prayer song based on the Sermon of the Mount of our blessed Lord. And it is prayer is, lead me, Lord. Lead me. Now for the graduation part of our ceremony. Good evening. I'm Karen Rahill, Principal of DeSales Catholic School. Thank you for being with us tonight as we celebrate the DeSales graduating class of 2022 at St. John the Baptist Parish. I'd like to thank Father James for not only allowing us to hold graduation here tonight, but also for all his time and dedication to DeSales as he serves as our canonical administrator. It is truly appreciated. While I am proud of all our students have accomplished as DeSales graduate, I know I will be even prouder of you as you go on to achieve academic, athletic, and community service honors at your respective high schools. Each year, I am, ama I am amazed at how well our graduates do when it is time for their high school graduations. This year is no exception, as DeSales class of 2018 graduate, Emma Flatto, was named valedictorian of Sacred Heart Academy and several other graduates are going to continue their athletic careers playing college sports. My wish for you as you leave DeSales 
is that when opportunities are presented to you in high school, you make the most of them. I think you all remember that I used to be a librarian, so I can't not bring books into my, my talks. And as a former librarian, Dr. Seuss was always one of my favorite authors. Green Eggs and Ham has this memorable line about trying new things. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. You do not like them, so you say. Try them, try them, and you may. Try them and you may, I say. So next year, when you're in high school, try something new. Audition for the school musical. Join the yearbook club. Take up an instrument. Try out for a new sport. Get involved in student government or service clubs. There are so many opportunities. Soak up the knowledge that your teachers share with you in class. Make your four years of high school memorable ones that treat every day as a gift. Teachers, parents, and grandparents, Thank you for all you have done and all you continue to do. Graduates, I'll leave you with one more Dr. Seuss quote from Oh, the Places You'll Go. At the very end of the story, he says, you'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with great care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Kids, you'll move mountains. So be your name Buxbaum or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai, Allie, Van Allen, O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. So we'll miss you. And like I said this morning, please make sure to come back. You're always welcome at DeSales. And at this time, I'd like to invite up Mrs. Grenchali, our assistant principal, to give you those all-important diplomas. The following students have completed the course of study for the elementary school and are awarded diplomas granted by the Diocese of Buffalo and the State of New York. Please hold your applause until all of the graduates are announced. Arden E. Anterline. Kimberly C. Betch. Olivia G. Bedak, Noah Z. Bowman, Emma A. Buzak, Carson J. Simney, Nathan P. Couturier, Aiden J. Cronkite, Colton R. Doty, Catherine M. Perkins, Jameson E. Fritton, Edwin H. Fritz, Margaret A. Galley, Caroline A. Griffin, Kennedy P. Kaminsky, Haley L. Karashevsky, Parker J. Karashevsky, Torin E. Kilroy, Dominic J. Leo, Keenan R. Lenan, Mia A. M. Masters, Gabriel J. McQueen, Ryan M. Morris, Graham H. Schultz, Ariel Smith, Colin M. Sidoro, Alexandra R. Thurston, Nathan E. Tamino, Laura Treese, Andrew E. Walker, Brandon D. Weepert, Jackson L. 
Yeager. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the DeSales Catholic School Class of 2022. Please be seated. The President's Award for Outstanding Achievement for Academics is given to those students who show educational growth, improvement, and educational development in their academic subjects. It recognizes students who work hard and give their best effort in school. This year's awards go to Jameson Fritton, Please come forward. Mia Masters, Emma Buzak, and Colton Doty. The President's Award for Academic Excellence is given to students who demonstrate high motivation, initiative, integrity, intellectual depth, leadership, and exceptional judgment. This year, awards go to Torin Kilroy, Dominic Leo, Kimberly Batch, Arden Anterline, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Morris, Edwin Fritz, Alexandra Thurston, Haley Karashevsky, Nathan Couturier, Caroline Griffin. I have a letter from the President of the United States for the class of 2022. Young leaders like you are why the First Lady and I are more optimistic about the future than ever before. This award is a testament to your hard work, tenacity, and perseverance, especially during these difficult times. You have shown your family, friends, school, and community that you can accomplish and you should be very proud. You are part of the most gifted and talented generation in our history and the world is going to need you. Keep studying hard and remember to always lead by example. I have every confidence that you will translate your talents into greater opportunity, happiness, and prosperity for yourself, our nation, and the world. Your future is bright. Keep the faith. Joseph Biden. The American Legion Award is given to students who most exhibit the qualities of courage, honor, leadership, patriotism, scholarship, and service. This year's recipients are Colton Doty and Alexandra Thurston. The Knights of Columbus Award is given to students who demonstrate virtues in his or her daily life and who are examples of Christianity within the student body. This year's recipients are Dominic Leo and Kimberly Batch. The New York State Comptroller Award for hard work and dedication, as well as a commitment to public service, is given to Edwin Fritz.
The Dana Family Memorial Award is given to a student who exemplifies the spirit of St. Francis de Sales of optimism, humility, and gentleness in memory and honor of the deceased members of the Dana family who are part of the de Sales family. Frank R. Dana, class of 51, John F. Dana, class of 73, Frankie Dana, class of 98, William Kirsch, class of 50, given by Margaret Judge Dana Kirsch, St. Joseph's Academy, class of 1950, Mark R. Dana, class of 75, and Patrick Judge Dana, class of 2001. This award is given to Torin Kilroy. Our next award will be presented by Mrs. Molly McGowan, who is the sister of Catherine Wick Minor, class of 1972. This award is given by the YWCA of the Niagara Frontier to a female member of the graduating class. The recipient embraces a selfless passion for empowering women and providing an empathetic helping hand to those in need of support and encouragement. This year's award goes to Mia Masters. The Dr. James Bish and Mrs. Jenny Martin scholarship is given to a student who shows great kindness and a commitment to helping others. This year's scholarship goes to Caroline Griffin. The Home School Association Award in memory of Bishop Edward Head is given to a student who will attend a Catholic high school and who, like Bishop Head, is, was a positive, decisive leader. The student is known for their persevering, positive nature and uses faith and responsibility to guide their actions. This year's award is given to Ryan Morris. The Homeschool Association sponsors an award in honor of Sister Roberta Thoen. It is given to a student who will continue on in Catholic education and who, like Sister Roberta, possesses the following traits, a great sense of community spirit, personal integrity, a spirit of cooperation, and a love of all humanity. This year's award goes to Haley Karaszewski. The Mullane Family Scholarship was established to honor the memory of their father, Jack Mullane. This award honors a student who has a strong desire to further their education at a Catholic high school. The recipient of this scholarship is Parker Karaszewski. The New York State Office of the Attorney General recognizes remarkable young people for their courage, commitment, and character. This year's honors go to Arden Anterline and Nathan Couturier. The following students have received Catholic high school scholarships. Please stand when I call your name. Mount St. Mary Academy, Ryan Morris, Presidential Scholarship, Scholastic Achievement, and the Vito Fortunati Family Award. Haley Karaszewski, Academic Excellence Award and Sister School Award. Margaret Galley, Bill and Jean Err, Scholarship, and Daughters Award.
the Academy of the Sacred Heart, Caroline Griffin Legacy Award, St. Joseph's Collegiate Institute, Edwin Fritz, and the Sigmund Bidet Scholarship. Congratulations. My apologies to Gabriel McQueen. <laughs> He received the Spirit of Education Scholarship. Congratulations, Gabe. That must have been a nice Okay. At this time, our eighth graders have a special presentation for their parents. And now I'd like to introduce Mrs. Kim Canoodla, our Director of Advancement, who will honor the class of 1972. Good evening. DeSales Catholic School is blessed to have a past rich in history and tradition. We teach our students to honor the contributions of the Catholic leaders that walked the halls before them. Our goal is to produce the leaders of tomorrow with their Catholic education as a foundation, emphasizing the values taught by St. Francis DeSales, love, compassion, mercy, and sacrifice, justice in all they do. We are honored to have a few members from the DeSales High School class of 1972 with us today. They join us in celebration of the 50th anniversary of their graduation from DeSales. At this time, we would like to call these alumni forward to receive an honorary diploma from DeSales. When you return to your seats, please remain standing. Bill Lambert.
Molly Castle Pier. Catherine Wick Minor. This honorary diploma is being accepted by her oldest daughter, Julie. Greg Pope. Dr. Kathleen Riley. Tanya Richards Tabor. Regina Gall Grancelli. Oh. Yes, our very own Mrs. Grancelli. <laughs> I'm going to have Mrs. Grancelli join me up here for just a moment. At this time, I invite the DeSales Catholic School, class of 2022, to please join your fellow alumni and stand. So class of 2022, can you stand? Would all the alumni present at this celebration, whether you're from DeSales Catholic School, Lockport Catholic School, DeSales High School, St. Joseph's Academy, would you please stand and join the class of 1972 and the class of 2022? Mr. T Even the class of 2021, <laughs> you guys are included too. All right, we've got everybody. Okay, wow. commencement offers our graduating students the chance to see the achievements of DeSales past while providing our alumni a glimpse and promise of DeSales future. In your program is the alumni pledge. Alumni, including our newest alumni from the class of 2022, please join Mrs. Grancelli as she leads us in reciting the pledge. In gratitude for my Catholic education, I pledge my loyalty to my alma mater. In the spirit of St. Francis de Sales, I promise to live a life of love, compassion, mercy, sacrifice, and justice in all that I do. With the help of God, I will uphold these values and I will be faithful to the friendships I have made at de Sales all the days of my life. Amen. God bless all the alumni. Thank you. At this time, it is my honor to welcome our guest speaker this evening, Kelly Kennedy, DeSales class of 1989, mother of Ryan Morris, class of 2022. Welcome, Kelly. Hello, proud parents, family members, members of our DeSales family, and friends of the DeSales class of 2022. We are happy you're here to celebrate with them. And to my fellow alumni, I can call you that now. I know I speak on behalf of Mrs. Rahill and all of your amazing teachers over the years when I say we are so proud of you and so very excited for what the future holds for you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Kennedy Morris. I'm the mom of Ryan Morris, one of the graduates today. I graduated from DeSales Catholic High School. I went to college at St. Bonaventure University, 
where Mrs. Reho was as well. I graduated with a bachelor's in political science and a major in French. After that, I received my master's in teaching French at American University in Washington, D.C., and have been teaching French for 26 years. Ryan and I both drew the short straw today, I guess, because we both ended up doing speeches. But we were both honored to do it, and I will try my best to share some of the things I have learned at my time at DeSales that mean so very much to me. Ryan has pleaded with me not to feel all the feels in this speech, so I'll do my best, but I've got my Kleenex just in case. I lose the bet if I don't, so that's my motivation. <laughs> Mrs. Rahill, who by the way, is one of the greatest role mod models you will ever know, asked me to speak to you today because I, like you, graduated from DeSales, but when it was a high school. The last year it was a high school, in fact, in 1989. And for all of you math whizzes, that was a short 33 years ago. I, too, gave a speech like the one Lexi will give in a few minutes. But for my class, it felt like the end of an era. My class of 25 didn't know what would become of our beloved school. We fought with the fear that others may never learn, laugh with, or love all that we did at DeSales with amazing individuals who taught us and changed our lives for the better. But like strong families do, faculty, alumni, and friends of DeSales never gave up on their family or in their faith in DeSales and all that it had to offer. And a few years later, thank you, God, DeSales reopened its welcoming doors as a pre-K through eight school. And all of you are among the beautiful results of that love of DeSales. You graduate today because of the determination and dedication of older members of your DeSales family who worked hard and who continue to work hard to keep DeSales the start of something great in your lives. So now, as you look forward to summer, to high school life, the torch is passed to you. As you enjoy your high school years, you need to keep that love and dedication and service to your family strong. DeSales has given you so many gifts, many of which you're still too young to realize, but please believe me, it will hit you one day and you'll smile and say to yourself, thank you, Mrs. Asher, for teaching me to advocate for myself. I'm a stronger and more, and more confident because of you. Or you may say, thanks, Mr. Grancelli, for thinking outside the box, for seeing my strong points as a learner when even I couldn't. Or maybe someday soon you'll say, Mrs. Chase called it first. She said I do marvelous things. And I guess she wasn't lying. I received those gifts when I went to DeSales way back when. Gifts I didn't realize would shape and change my life for the better. I had a religion teacher, Father Frank Shimshiner. Shimmy, we would call him. Well, not to him. He was a very serious teacher in the classroom. A super smart man who was determined to get my class we weren't so very different from you guys, actually. We were no stranger to a weekly lecture regarding questionable incidents and behavior. Father Frank taught us about God's will for us to be the very best versions of ourselves. He put a lot, he taught me that you get out of life that which you put into it. You don't put a lot into a class or an activity that challenges you, you won't get much out of it then. The same goes with your faith. You don't give it much attention. You just go through the motions at church. You probably won't get much from going there. But make your faith an important part of your life. You will see it blossom. You will see all the good that God does every day because of your strong faith that you continually work on. Mrs. Fraz tells you something similar in math about input and output. I know she does putting maximum input into whatever you do in your lives will bring forth maximum output you never dreamed of. And she's so right. 
I can tell you that on many occasions in my life, Father Frank's words in my head helped me to make important decisions I have never regretted. I am so grateful for that wisdom he shared with us each day in class. You have been blessed to have Mr. Schuster on your side, who loves to talk to you and share his stories and his knowledge and experiences of years teaching about faith. Mark my words, he will be in your head someday when you need advice, and you will be grateful for his gift of wisdom. My English teacher from DeSales, Mrs. Toonhurst, who many of you have met as a sub, actually, on several occasions. She doesn't take any nonsense, if you remember correctly. She had the wonderful knack of seeing the good in each of her students by getting to know their backstory and what made them the teenagers they were. From listening to her, I learned that when you look, you continually look for the good in each other. You will find it, even if it isn't apparent at first. And, and noticing that good, pointing it out, and cheering each other on, pulling each other up when you need it, it will make you the happiest and most successful kind of person. Anyone can see the not so great stuff. We all let that show from time to time. We see people pointing out the bad all over the news, all over social media every day. Take a look at each other right now. Look at your neighbor. Look at the kids sitting in front and behind you. You know each other more than most. Many of you have been together since pre-K. And I know this time of year, sometimes we can get on each other's nerves. That's just part of family living. But the gift you have to share is celebrating the good we see in each other. Notice each other's strengths as well as your own. Each of you has the incredible power of making someone stay with your words and actions or just making it worse. It makes you stronger as a group and as individuals when you help each other realize you all have something so great to give. I can't talk about DeSales without mentioning Father Jerry Barco. I'm sure you heard when Father Jerry passed a little while, a little over a year ago. He was also my religion teacher and my French teacher, famous for his colorful language in the classroom. He called it like it was. When it wasn't pretty, he let you know. I don't think I ever told my daughter this, but I got my first, my one and only detention from Father Barco. I was driving to McDonald's for breakfast with my friends before school one day, and I arrived 30 seconds late for French class. I never did that again. But we loved him dearly. He encouraged us to travel in college, to study abroad, to learn about other cultures and other ways to look at life. I loved hearing about his travel stories and the funny situations he experienced as he studied and served as a priest in Europe. I took his advice and I studied in France my junior year. And his words of wisdom were spot on. I changed my major in graduate school with no regrets, thanks to my experiences in France. Those experiences I may never have had if I didn't have his wise words in my head about the priceless lessons you learn about yourself and life in general from studying in another country through a different lens. That love of French and its culture led me to think about teaching as a career, a career that's never boring, always presents a new challenge of some sort, and makes work interesting every day. It allows me to share something I love in a way that positively affects my students' lives, just like Father Barco did for me. So here you are, graduates of the class of 2022, you pulled through online learning in sixth grade. You masked like crazy in seventh grade. You met the challenging re-entry in eighth grade under the new normal conditions, right? Despite, despite less than ideal learning situations, you prevailed. Some of you endured unimaginable losses in your families along the way. And you lovingly supported each other to get through it. You helped, you helped one another when COVID and other illnesses came knocking at your door. You did FaceTime study sessions 
and group chats to keep your classmates' spirits up and stay connected. <clears throat> I am amazed by how well and how wonderfully you have taken care of each other. It is a wonderful and appreciated trait that so many of you have mastered at a young age. It will certainly help you to serve others in the workplace and those you love in the future. Please don't put those gifts that you have, that have those gifts developed at DeSales on a shelf after you leave here. You have too many skills and too many talents now. There are going to be heroes in this class talented athletes and entertainers, health professionals, and those who will serve others with compassion. There are future engineers here and programmers among you and those who will protect us from harm. I bet there will be scientists here, thanks to Mrs. P, who sparked your interest to learn about how our planet and all of God's cre creation works. I pray there will be future Mrs. Suliskis here, because I know how well her creativity makes what you read and what you write come alive. I challenge you now to use your gift of influence with each other and with those you meet in high school to point out and bring out the very best in each other, just as your family and those who love you here at DeSales have done. It's what knights do. It's what we do for family. They believed in the good in you. They pulled you up when you needed it. They taught you how to serve. So class of 2022, congratulations. Go celebrate and then get to it. Continue to make us proud. May God bless you and may you all know how much you are loved. Thank you, Kelly. That was some very, very good advice. At this time, I would like to introduce Alexandra Thurston, the valedictorian of the class of 2022. She's the daughter of Stephanie Thurston, a Lockport Catholic School graduate in 1989. Father James, Father Daniel, Deacon Howard, parents, grandparents, and family members, teachers, staff, and administration, and most importantly, class of 2022. If you think about it, school is like a book and each grade is a chapter. Standing up here looking at my fellow classmates, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet because in my next chapter, we won't all be together. But we shouldn't dwell on the thought of parting with each other when I know that no matter where high school takes us, our DeSales class will always be in our memories. So that is why, with the short time we have left together, I want to reminisce on our beginning chapters. Most of us started at DeSales in pre-K, making it our first chapter with each other. Yes, we had kids come and go, but we've always had a core group. I like to remember the easy days in elementary school when we grew up and grasped easy concepts together. The days when we thought that being line leader was as important as being the president. The way, the way we would race against each other to see who can complete the math problems first. I personally love to think of all the crazy stunts we pulled in fifth grade or when we would spend all of recess doing truth circles. <laughs> and we can't forget our reading logs that we had every single day. I think each of us lied at least once on those, saying that we read for 20 minutes when we know we definitely didn't. We didn't know it yet, but these years were only the beginning of a special bond that we would keep with us years later. I want to thank my elementary school teachers for guiding us and giving us the fundamentals needed for middle school. 
After days spent in the summer anticipating the first day of sixth grade, it finally came, and now we had new responsibilities. Schoolwork was harder, and projects were more complex. I think we all remember Mrs. Asher's pyramid project. That was something, all right. Even though school got harder, the happiness never stopped. I had a great homeroom, the funniest lunch table, and some of the best friends I could ever ask for. Sixth grade brought a lot of firsts, including my first year in ski club, the first time I tried straightening my hair, and my first pandemic. I remember being on FaceTime with my friends and all of us agreeing that quarantine was only going to last two weeks, not knowing that we wouldn't see each other again for a couple of months. When seventh grade started, it wasn't the same. Masks covered our faces and some kids were still doing online learning. Even though we were back in school, I still felt distanced from all of you. Our desks were spread out and we could only have three people to a lunch table and we were constantly being told to stay away from each other. Still, there are many things that made that year worth remembering. For example, during lunch when someone would play a song on their iPad and we would all sing along. Also, when we would go to the country club and then we ate ice cream after. By the end of seventh grade, I was telling myself, Lexi, you can do it, you only have one year left. In my opinion, this year was my favorite, even if it was our last year together. Honestly, I think the thought of this year being our last brought us closer, even if some of us don't want to admit it. Throughout all these years of being together, we became a family. My favorite moments of this year include our field trip, going on all the water slides at Kalahari, messing around at the practices for Moana, and so much more. I'm going to miss Pi Day with Mrs. Fraz, playing knives in Mrs. Asher's class, and ladies who lunch with Mrs. Siliski. I'm going to miss playing basketball with my friends, decorating my homeroom door, and playing cahoots with Mrs. Palumbo. I'm also going to miss my teachers. Mrs. Asher always made class fun with her comments and never got mad at me when I walked into class late every day. <laughs> Mrs. Frost was strict, but her and I bonded over our sarcastic humor. And sometimes you have a special teacher who really made an impact in your life, and for me, that was Mrs. Siliski. <sighs> Out of everyone, you know the mo most that I pushed myself hard, maybe even too hard. Even if it was just a small comment, your words made me feel better about myself, and I bet there are other students who feel the same way. Dr. Seuss once said, sometimes we don't realize the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Standing up here in front of all of you makes me think about how I didn't realize the value of our moments because now all I have are memories. I want to say how proud I am of us, and I will be forever grateful that I got to grow up alongside all of you. Whether I've known you for 10 years or only one, you have all played a special part in my years here at DeSales, and I honestly love you guys so much. I'm gonna miss you so much, oh my god. <laughs> Now, as we go into high school, I just want to say that I all believe in you, and just remember this isn't the end of your book, this is just the next chapter. And with that, happy graduation. Thank you, Alexandra. Congratulations to all of our graduates. Uh, just uh, before we conclude tonight, uh, you are invited on behalf of the DeSales Homeschool Association to join the graduates for a reception uh, right downstairs in the St. John's Parish Hall when Mass concludes. Our closing song is found in the program. Let us pray. <laughs> almost, almost, one, one last prayer. One last prayer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Green, okay. 
Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Now your closing song is found in the program, Because He Lives. <laughs>